hello students so in this video i'll be discussing about sound and different concepts related with sound so when we talk about sound we can define sound as a form of energy which creates the sensation of hearing now when we talk about the term hearing it necessarily does not mean hearing in case of human beings it can be hearing associated with other animals also so Normally, when we say that sound is traveling, sound travels in the form of waves. So, first we'll try to see what are the different types of waves that are there. So, when we say or when we uh, hear the word wave, this kind of a picture comes to our mind. That is the water wave or the waves in the sea. But basically, waves are of two types. We have electromagnetic waves and mechanical waves. Electromagnetic waves are those which do not require a medium to travel. For example, from sun, we are getting two forms of energy. One is heat and another one is light. And both these two forms of energy, they are traveling. Uh, most of the space between earth and the sun is empty. There is nothing, no medium is there. So they can travel through uh, a vacuum, you can say. So they don't need a medium to travel. So what are the examples like light waves, heat waves, radio waves? like whatever signals we get in our cell phones coming from the satellites. So all these are traveling through a, a space which does not have any medium. Next we have another form of waves which are mechanical waves. So mechanical waves are those which will be requiring a medium to travel. That means there has to be certain particles in space and those particles will be pushed and the uh, wave can travel. So example sound waves and water waves. These mechanical waves, depending on their pattern, they can be again classified into two different types. One is your transverse wave, another one is your longitudinal wave. Now when we talk about transverse wave, the pattern of transverse wave looks like this. So the higher point of the wave, it is called the crest and the lowest point on the wave is called the trough. So suppose you tie a thread to a pole and you give the thread a jerk. So a kind of wave will be created. So that higher point that is the crest, lower point that is the trough. So the and in the next moment what will happen again this particle will come down here. This particle will go up there. So those waves which are traveling in the form of crest and trough are called transverse wave. One more thing to be observed here. Here the particles are vibrating vertically whereas the wave is traveling horizontally. So that means the direction of vibration of particles and the direction of traveling of the wave are perpendicular to each other. So the direction of vibration of particles is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Propagation means traveling of the wave. Example water waves. Next we come to longitudinal wave. So suppose these are the particles which are equidistant to each other. They are not vibrating. Now someone gives a push here. So what will happen, this first particle will come closer to the second particle. So it forms a region of compression. In the next moment what will happen, the second particle will go and hit the third particle whereas the first particle will come back to its original position. So the compression travels forward and a gap is created behind it. This gap is called rarefaction. Again when there will be push, again the first particle, the second particle will come here, first particle will hit this. Suppose for example in school when you are standing in an assembly line and someone from behind pushes the person in front. So he goes and pushes the another person in front and what the earlier person does he goes back to his original position. So that way. So what we are finding here this wave is traveling in the form of compression and rarefaction. And this is the direction of vibration of particle and this is the direction the, the, it is the same direction in which the wave also travels. So the direction of vibration of particles is parallel to the direction of propagation of the wave. So such waves are called longitudinal wave, example sound waves. Now after this we will be studying about the properties of wave but before studying the properties of wave we need to uh, understand an experiment which tells us that sound being a mechanical wave it will require a medium to travel. Because you know just now we have studied that mechanical waves are those which requires a medium to travel. So let us have a look here that for this experiment we take a bell jar. Now it's called a bell jar because the bottom part of the 
jar is open just like a bell it's not that it's a bell jar because there's a bell fitted in it it's not so so we take a bell jar and we fit a bell inside it an electrical bell which has a gong and a hammer and the base of the bell jar is sealed and a tube is fixed to it and this tube is connected to a vacuum pump now initially when we'll switch on the bell we can see the ringing of the bell as well as we can hear the ringing of the bell but after we switch on the vacuum pump when the air will be sucked out and as the inside space becomes empty it becomes vacuum after that if you ring the bell you can see the ringing but you'll not be able to hear the ringing of the bell so this proves that sound requires a, a medium to travel now when we are talking about wave the properties of uh, sound wave properties of sound wave are same as properties of any wave you take any wave whether it is electromagnetic wave or you can take mechanical waves all waves will have certain basic properties it's not that these properties are only for sound wave even if you take a water wave it will have those properties hence generally we generally call it properties of wave so uh, we know that sound wave is a longitudinal wave traveling in the form of compression rarefaction compression rarefaction so on but what is the problem the problem is that when we will try to discuss the properties of wave it is little bit difficult to visualize or uh, understand on uh, the properties with the help of this kind of a diagram so we will be converting a longitudinal wave into a transverse wave to understand the different properties now wherever there are region of compressions it corresponds to region of crest for a transverse wave and when, wherever there are regions of rarefactions it corresponds to the trough in case of a transverse wave so that way we are interconverting and now we'll discuss the different properties so the first property is called amplitude first let us read the definition that amplitude is defined as the maximum displacement of a vibrating particle on either side of the mean position so this is the mean position mean position means when the particles are not vibrating suppose you tie a thread to a pole and you're not vibrating the thread you are holding the thread in a stretched position so that is called the mean position now when you give it a jerk it will go above some particles will go above the mean position some particles will go below the mean position so how much the particles are getting displaced maximum on either side either on the upper side or on the lower side of the mean position that is called amplitude and since it is displacement therefore the SI unit will be meter next we come to the concept of wavelength so when we talk about wavelength um, the name itself indicates that it is nothing but the length of a complete wave it is indicated by a symbol which is called lambda it is written in this pattern okay LAMBDA lambda so it is defined as the length of a complete wave now a complete wave if we begin from here it will include if we are beginning from mean position it will include one full crest and one full trough so that will be the wavelength if you are beginning from one crest it will go up to the next consecutive crest because one full trough is there and half of the crest here half of the crest here so complete one wave similarly if we begin from one trough it will go up to the next consecutive trough so that is called a wavelength and since it is length so the SI unit will be meter so next property that we have is the time period so when we are talking about time period so uh, the definition it is represented by letter capital T so let me tell you when we talk about time taken in physics we represent it with small t but when we are talking specifically about time period it is the the representation is with capital T so what is time period time required for one complete wave or vibration or oscillation all these are interchangeable terms is called time period and since it is time so SI unit will be second so suppose there is one wave so how much time it takes to complete one wave that is called time period it can be 5 seconds it can be 10 seconds it can be 1 hour it can be any time okay next is frequency so frequency is represented by letter N there is one more um, symbol which can represent frequency it is written just like V but generally we try to avoid this symbol because when we'll be doing numericals then uh, 
velocity is also represented by v so when the students write they usually tend to confuse between v and this particular symbol mu so uh, frequency we try to represent by letter n small n so what is frequency frequency is the number of waves or oscillations or vibrations completed in one second and it's called the frequency si unit is called hertz h-e-r-t-z represented by a-z so uh, suppose in one second one wave is completed then the frequency will be one hertz suppose in one second a wave is completing two waves or a vibration it's completing uh, or suppose this uh, pendulum it is oscillating and in one second it goes from here to here and again comes back again goes here again comes. so two oscillations are being completed complete oscillation so the frequency will be two hertz so that is the concept if it completes only half a wave in one second then the frequency will be half hertz next we come to velocity so definition of velocity is same as that we got in motion that distance traveled by a wave how much distance a wave is traveling suppose it has traveled 100 kilometer in two hours so 100 divided by 2 that will give you the velocity of wave so that is also represented by letter v so these were the different properties related with um, your wave which also applies to sound wave so in the next video we'll be trying to discuss about the properties of sound and the equations which we can derive from these properties of wave one uh, one relation is that um, frequency is one by time period or time period is equal to one by frequency so this uh, relation we will be deriving and another relation that we'll be deriving is that velocity is equal to wavelength into frequency so this uh, is the another uh, relation which we'll be deriving in our next video so do check for my next video and if you like the video do subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon for further notifications thank you